lesson. And today we'll be looking at momentum, right? So momentum, as you learned in lower lesson, is the effect of objects in motion, all right? So we're going to look at linear momentum. So the word linear means its object velocity is only acting in one plane, all right? So if the object is moving left, it's only moving left. So moving right, it's only to the right. If it's up, only up. If it's down, only down, right? So an object will not move like cardinal point, northeast or northwest, right? So if it's moving northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, those directions, then it's not linear. So linear just means that the velocity only remains in one plane, right? So momentum is given by P equals mv. So the m is your mass, v is your velocity, right? And the unit, therefore, mass is measured in kilograms, v is measured in meters per second, right? And also, it can be used as newton second, right? So because velocity, right, which you which would know before, that velocity is a vector quantity. So meaning, it takes its direction in which it's moving, right? So we use, if it's going down, it's a negative velocity. If it's going to the right, it's a positive velocity. If it's going up, positive. If it's going to the left, negative, right? So what I normally use to remember this is your T for your graph, right? So you have your, your Y and your X. When you're plotting a graph, on the right side, this is zero. On your right side, anything that's going this way, it's always a positive number. Anything that's going this way is a negative. Anything going up is positive. Anything going down is negative. So the same principle here will apply to the direction in which the object is going. Right? So once objects are moving, they'll have the tendency to actually collide with something else. Right? So objects moving would collide with something else, which is collision. And we have two types of collision that do exist. First type is our elastic collision, right? So elastic collision is where both objects or the three or four objects that are being collided to, right? When they hit each other, they bounce off, right? So imagine you throwing a ball at the wall, right? The ball is elastic, so once the ball hits the, ball hits the wall, it's going to actually bounce off. Right? And in most even car crashes, right? two cars collide, they actually separate. Right? So that type of collision is known as an elastic collision. And in this collision, the energy, the kinetic energy, is always conserved. So the kinetic energy before the collision, the total that was there, is equal to the total after. Right? And we're going to examine those things later. Second collision is inelastic. Right? So inelastic now, since elastic was when they hit, they separate, then inelastic now when they hit, they actually move together. So they hit and stick and move. Right? So this is just like glue. So they hit and they slightly like glue together and they move off with each other. Right? So those are the two types of collisions we have. So because we have collision, there's a law that we call the conservation of momentum, right? The conservation, once we conserve something in physics, we're stating that whatever was there before is equal to whatever was there after, right? So conservation of momentum states that the momentum before a collision, right, is equal to the momentum after collision, right? There's a condition for this that there's no external force being applied to the system. Right? So if we have two balls, ball A and ball B, their momentum, which we add together, right? once we add those momentum, this is before they collide, after they collide, right? we add those momentum together, those two momentums will be equal. Right? So let's look at this. So for elastic collision, in these two ball cases, they're both moving to the right. right? And remember, if you're moving to the right, it's a positive velocity. So VA is positive, VB is positive, right? So we have in single momentum being added together. After collision, A still remains going to the right, so we have a positive A velocity here, 
and a positive B because B is still going to the, to the right. So that's elastic. So all elastic equations will mimic this format, right? The only thing that changes will be the sign of their velocity depending on the question, right? Inelastic, right? So we have objects moving in opposite directions now before collide. And after they collide, they move, stick together and move in the direction that the larger one is going, right? So let's look. So A is moving to the right, and to the right again is positive velocity, right? B is moving to the left, so we have a negative. So that's the reason why this is negative here, because velocity for VB is negative, right? So we actually subtract in this momentum from this one. Right? And when we do that, that total momentum here is equal to the momentum after. So because A and B now moves collectively as one, we just add the masses and multiply by the V. That V is called by some books as the, the common velocity. So that V represents your common velocity that the objects will move at, right? Now, with an inelastic collision, the kinetic energy is not conserved. And why do you think that is the case? Let's take a minute. All right, so since you've thought about it, inelastic, since they hit and stick, right? There is something popular about things that hit and stick. The noise that they create is greater than if the object hit and bumps, right? So we examine because there is a loss in energy, because something has to stop, right? And because of that loss in energy, because it can be due to loss to sound, then the kinetic energy is not conserved. So whatever kinetic energy was here will not be whatever kinetic energy is, is there. Right? So these equations only apply to when the object is moving in a linear motion. Right? So we're going to have alright guys. So we're going to look at two instances, right? So a uh, elastic and a inelastic collision. Right? So in this case we have ball A moving at an angle theta that collides with ball B that's moving horizontally. Right? So after collision, ball A is actually deflected in that way at an angle to the horizontal that we're going to call alpha, right? And ball B moves at a gamma angle away from the horizontal V, right? So in this case, we have momentum before. So this here means sum, because we have two. So sum of momentum before equals sum of momentum after. Right? So the momentum of A, right? Now this is a tricky part, right? So we have two momentum that this object has. We have it in the the X plane and we have in the Y plane. Right? So what we have to do is to actually split up in terms of their planes, right? So let's do it for the, the Y plane first. So for the Y plane, we know that this is our Y plane, right? So Y here is opposite to the angle, right? And it's VA, so that's sine. So VA sine sine theta, right? So that's your y component of this ve velocity, right? So that's your velocity, and it's multiplied by your me, velo ME mass, right? So we have that. So mass times your velocity in your y plane. Now B, remember B is going horizontally, right? So there is no lift or dip to experience a y component so b is basically this right so there's no y added to b so that means b is zero right equals a again 
there is a lip somewhere here, so there is a Y, right? So again, it's your opposite. So it's MA sine MA in BC sine alpha, right? And remember, it's positive because it's up in this quadrant here. So VA, VC here is a positive Y. All right? And then B, B also, but B this time is this way. All right? So B is going down here. So that means it's a velocity that's negative. So we can put negative here. MB times still sine, so it's B, D, this time, sine, the angle here is gamma, right? So this is one equation based on your x component, right? But we don't want x alone because we have, this is y, sorry, so we need to find it for, for the x. So, in this case, it's for the x now, it's ma times va cos theta, because it's now adjacent to the angle, right? b, b now is going horizontal, so there is an x in b, it's a positive, so it's mb, bb, because there is no angle created, right? Equals this now to the x is ma x is going to your left so if it's going to your left is a negative right so it's negative bc cos alpha right and this x is going to your right right which is positive so it's positive mb times bd cos Gamma. Right? So with these two equations, then we we're able to actually find unknown quantities that the question would ask us to find. Right? And we're going to actually use this knowledge in our next lesson to actually do some questions based on momentum. Right? So this lesson is just to show us how we get the equations so it will be better able to understand our calculations next time. Right? Now let's look finally at inelastic right so again we have two planes right so that means we need to separate our x and our y so momentum before equals momentum after so in this we're going to do y first so momentum before so the y component here right so it's MA, Y is going up, sorry, all right, so it's a positive, times VA sine theta. B here, right, so when the diagram doesn't have an arrow on it, remember the arrow represents vector. So once there is no arrow there, then that means this object is at rest. And if you're at rest, then your velocity is zero meters per second. All right, so that means B is zero. We can add zero here. Plus A and B is added. So MA plus MB. And then multiply by the Y component of their velocity, right? Which is a positive because it's going up. So it's B sine beta. Right? And then finally, we look for the x component. So this has an x component, so it's ba times ba cos theta, because it's going adjacent to the angle, plus also b is still at rest, so it's zero, equals ma plus mb multiplied by b cos theta because we're finding the, the adjacent side, so it's cos, right? So 
this is how we would find the equation based on the question. The equations will be altered a little bit, but it's the same principle that does apply for elastic and inelastic collision. Right? So next class we'll be looking at using the knowledge here to answer some questions. Right? So thank you very much guys for tuning in today. Hope you understand something and see you guys next time.